Hey, well, just being able to come back to another video. Just uh, walking my sons to school. It's a beautiful day. Um, this video, guys, I want to do this video. Um, shout out to Lady B. She asked me about uh, my thoughts and uh, analysis on Dr. Sebi. You know, he was a uh, an herbalist, well-renowned. Um, he died in a prison in Central America somewhere. Okay, uh, he was arrested over there, and um, and he died on. A, you know, it was kind of mysterious situations. You know, I did a little research on it, and it just didn't seem right. You know, and if you guys are not familiar with Dr. Sebi, uh, he's, he's a, like I say, he's a he's a well-renowned herbalist. He was actually one of the first ones to proclaim a cure for HIV, a cure for AIDS, rather, and other uh, diseases. Well, the deal is, is this. What he preached was totally counterproductive to what the pharmaceutical companies and what the uh, food industry prescribes for us. Okay? One of his main uh, doctrines was the fact that you know, us as human beings and spiritual beings, what we put in our bodies, you know, because we're made of carbon, has to be carbon-based or has to have something that's going to interact with our chemical composition. And if it's not, it shouldn't be in our bodies. I love one of the analogies he used when it comes to uh, gorillas, eagles, and uh, polar bears. God, we know that the polar bear, you know, eats meat and it kills its prey. It kills its food. All right. The gorilla doesn't. The gorilla eats plants, seeds and things that's in this environment. He doesn't have to kill his own food. And the gorilla, like I say, is just as big as a polar bear sometimes. Then you have the, the eagle who eats blood and meat while other birds don't. And Dr. Sebi's whole process, a whole mindset on it is that, you know, we're supposed to eat what our body's cellular affinity is. It's only when we start putting things outside of our body, putting things inside of our body that's not uh, in chemical compliance with our bodies. And that's why if you look at the largest number of cases of high blood pressure, heart disease, diabetes, come on, man, I mean, unless it's just cognitive dissonance or we just really really slaved out and what Dr. CB said was you know you it has to be a form of slavery for us to eat the foods that were given to us and not eat the foods that the most high provides for us every day okay so um, you know it's just really amazing because there's so many people when half of the United States on high blood pressure medication something wrong with that Okay. When uh, you know the pharmaceutical companies can prescribe medications for diabetes, high blood pressure, and heart problems, and just price them out, price them out our ranges, and have people dying, that tells you right there it has to be some type of Stockholm syndrome. Um, the chemicals that they put in all these foods that are given to us are killing us. It's not an accident when you go around the world that most of the population in those regions don't die of high blood pressure and diabetes hmm? because their diet. So I just think it's interesting, guys, that even today, <laughs> they're killing us with the food they're giving us. I mean, think about this, guys. Frozen food? What? Frozen chicken tenders. Frozen chicken nuggets. Across the street. Anything frozen and processed, come on, man. You just inviting your body for cancers. So, God, like I say, do your research. I like to say, Dr. Sebin, may you rest in love. Um, you know, he put a lot of pressure on the pharmaceutical companies, guys. And, uh, you know, it's up to you to do what's best for your body. If you're still eating fast foods and, and processed foods... Man, where's the love? Okay? Ask yourself, how many people you know on high blood pressure medication, diabetic, 
and uh, have some form of cancer. Our bodies cannot take that stuff. Okay? Well, guys, thanks for watching. Uh, in the meantime, between time, may the most high society bring you joy and being with us out of 5,000.